Hi, my name is David McMaster. I'm the pastor at Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church in Chetwin, BC, and it's a privilege to be able to share the Word of God with you today. Today I want to start with you by talking about prayer. Christian or not, you've probably prayed at some point in your life. I was reading a statistic recently that said that even 30% of atheists have prayed in their lives at some point. If you don't know what prayer is, it's very simply talking with God. Or in other words, um, in the words of John Mark Comer said, prayer is simply the medium that we use to communicate and commune with God. So it's not just communicating, it's actually communing with the God of the Bible, having a relationship with Him. So what I want to do with you today is, is give you some simple and practical tools for getting started with incorporating prayer into your own life. But I must say this, this is only actually going to be helpful if you're already a Christian if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And here's why. Without Christ, you don't have access to the Father. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And that includes in prayer. Unless you come to Jesus and make him your, your Lord and your Savior, you don't have access to the Father. Now let me stress that you need to come to Jesus if you want to communicate and commune with God. You, you need to accept the gospel if you want to have any sort of genuine prayer life with God. So if you're not a Christian, let me, let me just share the good news of the gospel with you so that in faith you can have that opportunity to communicate and commune with God. The Bible tells us that we have rebelled against God through our sins. It has separated us from Him, but God in His grace and His love and His mercy has sent Jesus, His one and only Son, to take on flesh, to live a perfect and righteous life, and to die on the cross an innocent man condemned. While Jesus hung on that cross, He took upon all our sins and our shame and our unrighteousness and paid the penalty of hell in our place through His blood that was shed, so that in His resurrection, He rose from the dead. We could have forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life and a restored relationship with God. And the the way you receive that good news is through faith. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. When you've received that gospel in your life, You now have access to the Father as an adopted child of of God and confidence through Jesus Christ that He hears your prayer. And with that, within that relationship, you can continue to then grow in your prayer life. So I would invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ if you've not already done so today. With that established, I want to talk about both personal prayer and corporate prayer. Two, two different types of prayer that we see in Scripture. Personal prayer is simply talking to God both personally and individually. Jesus gives us some instructions on that. In Matthew 6, 5-6, to he says, Whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So prayer is not a performance. The the hypocrites view it as a way to prove to others how holy and devout and spiritual that they were, praying all these eloquent words in the earshot of others. Personal prayer must not be like that. The purpose of prayer is not to impress others. It is simply the, the ear of God which is why going to a private room is is very practical wisdom. It's only you and God in that room. All throughout Jesus' ministry, he modeled and prioritized this kind of personal, private prayer life. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus withdrawing often to spend time alone with the Father in personal prayer. Therefore, as followers of Jesus, we are to incorporate personal prayer into our lives. Our souls are designed to be in communion with the God of the Bible who hears our prayers and rewards our prayer time with His presence, which is amazing. Now, how do we get started with personal prayer? Well, let me give you five practical ways. First is find a regular place for private prayer. Jesus said, go into a private room, shut the door, and pray in secret. So the first thing to do is to find a place where there's no people. It's just you and the Father. Maybe that's getting up early or staying late at night, staying up late at night to find that time. 
Maybe for some of you, it's going into the woods to be alone. Uh, Jesus often went up a mountain to pray alone. Maybe it's in your car and your commute to work. Find that place where you can, you can be away from others, where it can just be you and the Father. Second is read the Bible. For some of you, you, um, you have a place to go and pray, but how do you actually get started praying? Especially if you've not prayed much in your life. Well, Scripture is full of models of prayer. Uh, for example, Jesus gave the Lord's Prayer as a template. St. Thomas Aquinas once said that the Lord's Prayer is the most perfect prayers. It is, in, in it we ask not only for the things that we rightly desire, but also the sequence that we should be desired. This prayer teaches us not only to ask for things, but also in what order we should desire them. And so the Lord's Prayer is the perfect template, and it can be found in Matthew chapter 6. The book of Psalms, it's a big book in in the Bible. It's a great place to learn how to pray. And and you can simply just read some of those Psalms as a prayer, and and it can teach you how to pray. So start with reading Scripture. Third, use the Acts method. The ACTS method is an acronym, and it stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. I I don't know who came up with that to to give credit to, but but it's a well-known acronym for praying. Start with adoration, which is simply giving praise for who God is. God is is holy. God is all-wise. He's ever-present, gracious, merciful, loving, all-powerful, and faithful. There's so much that you could say in just praising God for who He is and His character and His attributes and, and His holiness. Once you've spent some time with some adoration, move to confession. Admit your need for the gospel. Pray that God would search your heart and expose sin in your life. And if something is brought to life, confess those sins, repent of them, bring them to the cross, and receive the forgiveness that's offered through Jesus Christ. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Once you've spent some time doing that, you move on to thanksgiving. Um, which is a little bit different than adoration in that now you're thanking God for specific ways in which God has demonstrated his love and his blessings towards you. If he's provided for you in a certain way, give thanks for that. If he has comforted you in a real way, thank him for that. If he has healed you in any sort of way or if he's taught you something from his word, thank him for that. Then move on to supplication which is where you can ask God for requests for yourself, for your family, for your church, for your missionaries, unsaved friends and family, those who are sick, those who are lost and need Jesus, those who are going through difficult times. Bring all that before the Lord. So that's the ACTS method. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And it's a great way to start and to guide you through your prayer time. Fourth, pray without ceasing. Personal prayer is not limited to by just praying in a closed-door room. Scripture tells us that we are to pray without ceasing, to be persistent in prayer and to pray at all times. Practically speaking, you can pray throughout all the day. Pray when you're in the grocery store, pray while you're driving, pray while you're mowing the lawn. There's, there's no limit to praying. The more you pray, the more God will shape your heart and your desires and your affections and your actions. And the more you will be communing with God. When we pray all throughout the day, it invites God to be in the everyday details of your life, what God cares about the everyday details of your life. There's a few tools and suggestions to help you get started in personal prayer. And I would encourage you to make that a, a priority in your life. Let's talk about corporate prayer now. Corporate prayer means praying with other Christians. Um, Scripture makes it clear that it is important for the Christian to corporately pray together with other Christians. Now let me point you to some passages to show that. Acts 1.14 says they were continually united in prayer along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And this was the early church gathering together. Acts 12, 5, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church, so the gathered people of, of, of Christ, was praying fervently to God for him. Those are just a few examples of the early church praying together. Corporate prayer is important for us as Christians. And here is why it's important. First is that God receives more glory. In the words of David Mathis, uh, praying together not only adds power to a request, but it also means more glory for God when he answers. The more people who pray for a specific request, the more God receives glory from all these different people. Second, we pray together for a fruitful ministry. 
Paul the Apostle, who wrote um, um, much of the, the New Testament, regularly asked churches to pray for his gospel ministry. He was a missionary that had churches pray for him, that God would bring fruit to his ministry as he went and brought the gospel to various different places. And I do this as well. I'll often appeal to, to groups to pray for different ministries. The more people praying, the better. Third, is that we pray together for unity. When we practice praying together, it shows that we are unified. The early church modeled that by being devoted to prayer together. And when we come together in prayer, it, it unifies us for the same purposes and the same mission that Jesus has called us to. Fourth, corporate prayer is a form of discipleship. Prayer is something that is taught and learned. Jesus taught his, his disciples, his 12 disciples, how to pray. And, and one of the things that the Great Commission tells us to do is to teach disciples to observe all that Jesus has commanded, including teaching people how to pray. So you who are mature in faith have an incredible opportunity to teach and model pray when you pray corporately with others, especially to those who are new to the faith. And for those of you who are new to faith and want to grow in your prayer life, find a mature Christian who you can pray with as, as he disciples you to pray. Fifth, we see more of Jesus when we pray corporately. When, when you pray with others, you will pray for things you never thought to pray for. When, when you pray with others, you will see a big picture of the kingdom. You will learn more about what Jesus is doing and how he's working in and throughout your different circumstances. So those are five reasons why you should corporately pray with others. Now let me give you some practical ways of corporately praying. First is pray with, pray with others often. Join a, a prayer group at a church or a Bible study or find some other Christians and make time to pray with them. Second, start with scripture. That was a suggestion I mentioned under personal prayer. But again, it's good to have something to anchor your time of prayer, to guide your time of prayer. And scripture is, is one of the best places that you can go to have that guided. Third, make prayer focused and brief. Again, this is, this is a suggestion, but this is, not taking, but this is taking into account that Jesus tells us not to ramble on in our prayers and not to show off our spirituality. The more words you add, the more you risk rambling and showing off your spirituality. So keep it short and sweet and to the point. You might be able to pray for three hours on your own in, in personal prayer time, which is awesome, but, but in corporate times, you need to keep others in mind as, as, um, as your own heart and perceptions in mind as well. Fourth, share how God is answering prayer. God is answering prayer all the time. When God answers prayer and you have prayed corporately, share that answer with people because then God gets more glory. So those are some suggestions to, for you to get started praying both personally and corporately. And the best way to start is just to start. So let me close by praying for you. Father, you are holy, you are all wise, you are loving and gracious and merciful. We do not deserve to have your ear, but we are thankful that through Christ you have provided us access to you. Father, we thank you for giving us this means of prayer as a grace to communicate and commune with you. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength and to the joy to build deeper rhythms of prayer in our lives. And I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.